What's up guys, my name is Khan and we're back today in Scrap Mechanic and we're back with an epic creation that I've always wanted to do for a long time in Scrap Mechanic and that is this right here. It is an epic artillery mortar piece. So as you can see, we are on the multiplayer Monday mortar challenge map. Pretty much every time we've done multiplayer where we launch projectiles, all we're really doing is firing the projectile and trying to guess where it's going to go. We don't really have much accuracy, especially when we're doing these mortar lobbing challenges. So I decided to use some of the number logic and do some, you know, awesome math, which I know everyone's excited about, and actually sort of use real world physics to try and map the projectile movement and scrap mechanic. And although it's not perfectly accurate, because obviously scrap mechanic physics are not real world physics, it's not bad and it actually works pretty decently, I find anyway. So here we've got this artillery piece. And of course, if we, uh, you know, let's just aim it away from the targets. We'll aim it towards the multiplayer Monday garages there. And of course, this uses the mod pack just for that number logic, as well as the motors, which adjust the angle and all that. And then, of course, we've got this row of spud guns here from the mod pack, really simply just single block spud guns. And when we shoot, it'll actually break the four corner pieces first, then break the rest, which will in turn cause this explosive crate to launch just like that. So really, really good stuff. Of course, we could keep shooting and it would shoot. You know more spud guns but really simple stuff and it's actually really really consistent which is why we use this then of course we can just grab our cardboard replace it like that and then put our projectile in the middle and boom fire another so i'm gonna try and not make this episode completely about math but really simply projectile physics if you take away some of the things like air drag and air resistance uh, really simply, you can model the equation of any projectile flying through air based on really two pieces of information. And one is the initial launch velocity of the projectile, which is, you know, how fast we're launching this explosive crate up. And the second piece of information is the angle we're launching it at. And by doing that, you can actually use a quadratic equation which, you know, again, back to that math stuff, but it's really simply, it's an equation that looks like a giant parabola, a big curve, and it will actually model what point you'll land at. So with all that being said, you can actually use that equation and do some math and invert it and everything else to calculate based on how far you want to go, what angle you need to be at. And in the same sense, you could also say, okay, based on what angle I'm at, this is how far my projectile will end up going. So you can do the math in either direction, obviously, and really simply, all you need to know is that initial launch velocity. Now, of course, it's scrap mechanics, so we don't really know the initial launch velocity of the projectile, but it doesn't really matter. All we need to know is what numbers to plug into the quadratic equation. So I took a bunch of measurements and then, of course, determined what A, B, and C would be, and uh, this right here is actually us solving the quadratic equation. So really simply, all we're doing is we're taking the maximum distance you want to fire the projectile at, and we're plugging that into a really big equation. And in turn, it's giving us the angle that this artillery mortar device needs to be set at in order to make that distance. So this particular thing has a range between, well, I mean zero, which is stupid, it'll fire straight up, but it has a range between zero and 520 blocks. And that's represented by this D here. This zero here is supposed to be more like a circle, but it actually shows the angle this is at relative to, you know, the, the zero plane, which you set that manually. Obviously there's no real range finding on that. You say, I want to be lined up like this. And then you tell it the distance and you can see as we increment the distance and actually we can paint this to increment it faster. But as we increment the distance, you can see it's automatically changing what angle it needs to be at in order to meet that distance. And it'll do this properly and it'll do it to the proper trajectory math and it'll work no problem. And in fact, it'll actually be accurate within about five to 10 blocks. So it's pretty good despite the fact that scrap mechanic physics don't follow real life. Again, if you are really interested in trajectory physics, I'm not going to go into much more detail than that. Really simply, there's a quadratic equation we're solving that in turn compares this distance here, 395, plugs it into this equation, and in turn returns out 62 degrees with a bunch of decimals. So it says, okay, you want to go 395 distance, I need to be at 62 degrees. Really simply, uh, 522 is the max range. You can see if we go to 522, it'll actually bring the angle to 90, and then, you know, it'll start incrementing it in a different direction, just because of the way the sign works, and uh, long story short... 520, 521 is your max range. But you can see if we go to 520, it wants us to be at 46 degrees. And then as we come back down, you'll see it'll actually adjust that angle. So 48, 49, 50, and it's adjusting it even by small decimal points just to make it really accurate. So of course, the one question you're gonna ask is, well, that's great, Cod. Now you've converted distance into an angle. That's pretty much all this calculator is doing. We're saying, I wanna shoot this distance, but how do we actually determine the distance of these targets? And that's of course, 
where this super awesome epic targeting system comes in. So we're going to set the distance right now just to be about 300, maybe 250 or something like that, just to give us room. And then, of course, we kind of have to sit in a really weird spot here, but we look at the bottom of this, and there's actually a seat. And I know this looks really weird, but when you press the one button, it still looks kind of weird, except when you rotate around in strict follow cam, you're actually right on top of the distance sensor, which outputs its distance right there, 184. So we can line this up using the two and three buttons. So two and three will rotate ourselves left and right. One will just flip us back into that weird position. So you put yourself on strict follow cam and you use the two and three buttons to kind of rotate the laser into the position you want. And then four and five will tilt you up and uh, you kind of just use the laser guide to judge where the target is. So let's try and aim for this target. And uh, I think it'll be about like that. So there we go. So it is in fact 184. Now the thing with this targeting system and the thing with this mortar is it doesn't account for altitude. So 184 is the mortar and the mortar will shoot pretty consistently to the distances you give it. But we're shooting down a little bit. So because we're shooting down, we don't really want to be at 184. We might want to be a little bit less because the mortar is going to go further because it's thinking 184 on a flat plane, right? And we're shooting down a little bit. Same since if you're shooting up, then you got to change it a little bit and go a little bit higher. But we're going to take a bunch of shots here and we're just going to see how many of these targets we can get. So 184 right there. And uh, so we'll just take our distance and we'll tune it up to 184. So 180. And I, you know what? We'll, we'll get rid of the four. We'll just leave it at 180 because we are shooting down. I know the aiming system is a little weird, but I really wanted to figure out how could you make a system that allows you to sh look straight down the sights and tell exactly what distance you're at. So there we go. 180 and three, two, one. So let's see how accurate this is. Hopefully this one's pretty accurate. All right. Looks good. All right. Are you serious? That landed from so high up and it didn't explode. You know what? That was still really accurate though. You can see right on the right on the platform. Let's just fire another one. There we go. Look at that. That one's got a little bit of a tumble. All right. Here we go. Coming down, coming down. Perfect. So a little bit far on the target. That might be again because we're aiming up, but uh, you know what? We'll try and do the next one with a little bit more calibration. All right, so we've got it loaded. Let's just get in the seat here, press one, and the camera does some weird stuff. All right, so we'll just go over here and uh, we'll aim, you know what? We'll aim a little bit short on this one. Can we aim? Yeah, that's a little bit high. Let's aim short. All right, so apparently it's 184 to that as well. Really? It's actually... Okay, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to trust the system. It says 184. I'm going to trust 184. It is a live measurement on this camera, so I mean, I uh, you know, I I guess I'll trust it. And uh 3 2 1 All right. That it's looking good. I mean, the accuracy left and right is dead on. Now, this isn't welded down. You can, of course, weld it to the ground, but it doesn't really need to be. And look at that right in the middle. That was a bullseye. All right. So so far, we're pretty much 2 for 2 on the targets. I mean, that one's not exactly a bullseye, but pretty close. So let's go for that further target next and see what happens. Now, as I was saying before, the trajectory of the object is only really based on the initial velocity, but in Scrap Mechanic, you can't just put a different object on it. You have to launch large explosives with this particular configuration. You could change the values in the equation to make it work with a different projectile. For example, if you wanted to launch small explosive crates, but because we're not actually controlling the launch velocity, we're only controlling the launch force the weight of the projectile in turn determines the velocity. But if you launch something at the same velocity, it will fly with the exact same equation every time. So this equation is pretty good in scrap mechanic and uh, you know, it seems to work. It looks pretty much straight at that target. So what distance are we reading? 325. Okay, 325, we'll put that down again. So let's uh, tune up to 325 here. Also, you'll notice too, the aimer will actually adjust itself in the inverse of this. So it is mounted to the platform. So they rotate on the same rotation. But as this platform tilts, the aimer tilts back up. So it should still be aimed at the spot where we aimed it. And you can see it is there even as we tilt the platform. So that's kind of a nice feature. It just makes sure that, uh, you know, however you set it up, however you calibrate it, it'll keep that. So 325, um, you know what? We are aiming down. So let's go 320. And three, two, one. All right, it's looking good. It's definitely straight on. All right, what are we going to see? Oh, almost bullseye, just a little bit long of the bullseye. So again, 
I should really make a system that accounts for the height drop, but it's really just calculating the distance and it's a linear distance. So really, really cool stuff. But uh, let's go do the next target. So I guess what I need to do now is, uh, you know, ask the guys to play multiplayer Monday again, but allow us to use the mod pack and then just spawn this in and tell them it took 15 minutes. And I mean, I'd be 10 for 10 in shots. It would be absolutely awesome. You know what? Let's aim it there. It'll be on the close side. The other option is up a little bit, but I think that's far side. So let's aim close side. Now you want to make sure when you're using the aiming system, you can see it flips up. But if you have your cannon tilted at too far of a distance, it'll sometimes interfere with that and push on it. So you want to make sure... You know, you crank the distance back just a little bit when you're aiming. I mean, we had it okay, so it wasn't touching. This one is 259, and it looks like right on the close side. So I feel like if we put it in for 260, it should be pretty close to the bullseye. Um, 260, there we go. And 3, 2, 1. All right, hopefully this is dead on. Oh, we are, ooh, we're really, really close. Hold on. Oh, look at that. Look at that bullseye. Nice shot. All right, let's go for the really, really far one. We probably should have lowered this down too. Uh, generally speaking, you want to make sure that's out of the way so there's no interference with the projectile, but pretty good clearance there. Now remember, 520 is our max range. So if it's above 520, we can't do anything. So we got to actually aim pretty much there. Of course, you only have one degree of tolerance too. So that kind of makes it a little bit difficult sometimes. So that one's 460, 456. And that seems to be aiming at the front. Okay. Okay. So let's lower this down, 456. Let's go 460. And uh, we'll see if we can hit this. 460, here we go in three, two, one. Okay, okay. Is it gonna do it? All right, so we got three targets left. We'll just really quickly try and get them. I wanna save this close one for last because I honestly don't know you know, how, how it's going to work. We might not, we might have to move the whole cannon up a little bit to actually be able to range find it properly. All right, so let's get the top one. And again, we'll probably have to range find right onto the front of it. So I don't really know how that's going to work. What are we at? 334. All right, so it's 330 to the front of that platform. So we're also almost on even ground with it as well, I think. If not, it might be even a little bit higher. So let's actually go up to 350 maybe. Or maybe 345. So 340 and then we'll just paint this orange. And there we go, 345. So of course you've got an up and down button. Bottom row of course being down by 1, 10, 100, etc. And then up by 1, 10, 100. And then of course there's only really three digits because you can't really go above 520 anyways. But uh, 345, let's try this. And 3, 2, 1. I love the way that launches every time. It just sounds awesome. I mean it's looking good. Oh, it definitely hit. It definitely hit. It might have been a little bit uh, left because we aimed, I think we aimed a little bit to the left side of it. Of course, let me know what you guys think of this in the comments down below. I would like to make, I think, bigger artillery that shoots smaller projectiles across the entire map and maybe is GPS controlled or something. You can definitely do that. I mean, you know, the equation would be the same if you know what your current position is and where you want it to go. You could figure out what that distance is and what angle you need to be at. And you could do it all with that awesome math stuff that everyone likes so much. I mean, really simply, this just uses some basic math. All we're doing is graphing a curve. I mean, it looks a little bit complicated, but really when you work it all out based on trajectory physics, it's all known equations. You can look it up all online and it's really, really easy stuff. Uh, you know, and it just basically maps the projectile. All you need to do is figure out what factors you have on that projectile. And of course, to do that, I just did a bunch of testing and plugged in all the values into a spreadsheet. And lo and behold, you end up with an equation that kind of fits it as close as you can. All right, so this one is like 259, 260 to the front edge of it. So we'll just turn that off. I think we need to go down to probably 275, maybe 280 even, just to get somewhere in the middle. And three, two, one... Awesome, perfect. So of course, I'm really excited, guys, that you could do stuff like this in Scrap Mechanic. I'm really happy that... Oh, perfect. Look at that. Amazing. Good guessing skills. But I'm really happy that you can do stuff like this in Scrap Mechanic. Although it doesn't perfectly follow, you know, the equations of trajectory motion in real life, it's actually not that bad. And it's close enough that you can do, you know, stuff like this that lets you do some sort of fictitious range finding and actually approximate everything and it kind of works like it's really really awesome but i'd love to hear what you guys think in the comments down below what other kinds of things we can do with it of course like i said you can't use a different projectile you have to use this projectile on it no matter what if you try and use a different projectile it won't work because of the weight difference we could change the equation and we could manipulate 
these three values here. This is actually your A, B, and C values from your quadratic equation. So you could change these three values to work with a different weight of projectile, but you'd have to do a bunch of testing and actually measure what it is to figure out what that would be but it is possible and of course can be done and if you guys want me to do that let me know in the comments down below of course i'd love to try and make a longer range one but i think i would have to use smaller projectiles but i'm very curious to hear what you guys think and uh what you think of all this awesome math so let's just aim this really close no five see it's not five the laser yeah it's picking up that cart concrete okay so it's 80 77 to like a little bit past the circle let's go 70 all right, here we go. Three, two, one. Of course, this one's going to go really, really high up now. But hopefully it'll come down pretty much right on that circle. Look at that. That was an actual bullseye. There's nothing to it. So, of course, I will upload this to the workshop. It's really easy to use, guys. It's not very complicated. I will upload it with some basic instructions. But all you got to do is reload it like that. Make sure you put your projectile facing upright in the front position. Uh, you can use your range finding here if you'd like, which will show your range on that. And then, of course, you manipulate these two values. So this is your angle, which is linked straight into the range finding little hotkey. And then, of course, this is your distance. And when you set your distance, the projectile will fire that distance from the base of this sort of platform here. So, of course, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. And while you're at it, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And we'll see you all next time.